to join and I expected men to come with chainsaws to cut down these trees. And we have good news about these trees. And the reason we're all here is we were, we're going to welcome Lorax Dave down from the tree. Uh, we, have, we have four people that are going to speak. There's Obviously, there's, there's hundreds of people that have been involved in this, but the first person I want to introduce is Robert McCullough, the Eastmoreland Neighborhood Chairman. I first want you to know that there is no less important person than a neighborhood chairman. <laughs> we have no powers, we have no authority, we seldom have a budget. We take the biggest blowhard we can find and we make him chairman. I have my chairman hat, there it is. So, seriously, this is a very Portland moment. We believe in land use, we believe in environmentalism, we believe in people power. This is all of those things. We took an inferior position and by sheer determination turned it around. Now the motto of the East Moreland Neighborhood Association is, we have flying monkeys and we know how to use them. There's one right there. And I would like to officially appoint you all flying monkeys first class. <laughs> A few serious words. Exactly 22 minutes ago, the last papers were signed. so I know how to take uh, credit for everyone else's work. <laughs> I did very little. The people who did a lot were A, the, the activists we're about to meet. They were here all the time. They were scared. There was a lot of crazy stuff. They faced the police. We all know Lorix did not face the police. He looked down on the police. <laughs> <laughs> the police acted very well. We did get the help of the mayor and the mayor's chief of staff because they pulled Mr. Rimmers into the room for a nose-to-nose -nose discussion that we should have had three months ago. Bad law makes bad neighbors. Bad law makes conflict. We have bad tree law. The fact is that any neighbor that's lived 150 years should not be cut down for $1,000. And we are going to work our tail off to fix that. So, I've blithered along too much. I want to thank you all. I could not have done any of this without you. The community could not have done it without you. The city could not have done it without you. You are stars. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. For those of you that don't know Robert, he he is one of a group of people who can look at these trees for the rest of his life and say that they would not be here without the things that he did. That's right. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> um, this has been an amazing experience trying to save these trees. Um, I, I, I honestly believe that we couldn't do it. I just thought we had to accept the fact that somebody had the right to cut them down and put a house here. But that's not what happened, because I also believe that if enough people saw them, they would think that they shouldn't be cut down. And enough people saw them, and I've been so touched by that. It wasn't just neighbors who didn't want their trees cut down, it was a whole city and more that did not want these trees cut down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, amazing things happened this week.
the, on, on Monday, we thought we were still negotiating with Mr. Remmers, <laughs> president of Everett Custom Homes. Everett Custom Homes is the name of the company. <laughs> Everett Custom Homes. <laughs> we thought we were in negotiations with him, and on Monday morning, as we were taking our kids to school, we saw tree cutters hidden on the, on the avenue down there waiting for us to leave our home so they could come in and cut down these trees. I don't know if Gail's here. There, a, a friend of ours who lived around the corner came running up. We started shouting. We said, what are you doing? We sent out emails and texts. We said, you can't do this. You can't do this. And people came running from all over the neighborhood. And they stood under these trees. And they said, you can't cut these trees down. You just can't do it. And men with chainsaws came in. They had ropes in the branches of these trees and their chainsaws ready to cut. And people stood under them and said, no, don't do it. And they called the police and the police came in and the police told everyone that they were subject to arrest if they stayed on this property. And no one left. In fact, more people came on the property. <laughs> to those people for doing that. It's because of what you did that these trees are still here. And then on Tuesday, more people showed up in the morning and they just sat under these trees. And there was one guy named Dave who just sat under the trees. And in the morning, the, on, the, the tree cutters didn't come they, and they just decided to put up a, a fence, like this weird fence around it to keep everyone away. And that's, Dave, that's because it's well known that a guy who can climb a 150 foot tree can't climb a six foot fence. <laughs> <laughs> and so this fence was around this property and Dave said, he, he, he said to me, I'll never forget it, he said, you know, I, I, I've just got one more thing I have to do. And I thought he was gonna say today, but he said, I've just got one more thing I have to do for the rest of the month. <laughs> and I'm going to go do it, and then I'm going to come back here, and I'm not going to leave. <laughs> and so he went and he did whatever it was he had to do, and then he came back here, and he came with a friend, and they just started throwing ropes up in these trees, and he, and he climbed up into this tree. And then our friend Jesse, he started calling him Lorax Dave. <laughs> and of course we all know the Lorax, right? Yes, absolutely. But just last night, I, I read the Lorax again. And I don't think I can read this page without crying now. But we should all remember it. The Lorax says, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. right now is we're going to send this Lorax. This, this, this is an example of some of the things that have happened this week. All week, people have come by, they've cooked meals for Dave, kids have made little presents for him. Everyone has been so supportive of what he's doing. And we'd like to send this Lorax up into the tree, and when Dave comes down, this Lorax will stay up there. I just want to say how grateful I am to, to everyone for what you've done. Th these trees have been an obsession for me. And, and I, I didn't expect everyone to care about them as much as I do because I, I live next door to them. Um, but, but I see that you do. And I think if you stand here next to these trees for just five minutes, you know that they're important. And it's, it's inexcusable to think about cutting them down. <coughs> Mr. Remmer said that they were dangerous, that they were somehow threatening our homes, which is not true. We talked to arborists, that was a lie. And, and there's something in the tree code that says that, that a developer can pay $1,200 and cut down every tree in the lot. And I think that needs to get changed. Yes. 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 Yes.
these trees to realize that. But I, I hope we don't have to lose any more. I, I don't think this is the way that things should have to be done. I don't think I don't think we should have to pay a developer, Vic Remmers, I don't think we should have to pay him for for this extortionist money that we paid him. What's the name of this company? It's called Emory Custom Homes. What, what I would like to see go happen from now on is that developers would not think about doing something like this. But they would realize that, that, that cutting down trees to make their houses is bad business. I know that, I know that, I know that every developer in the city probably thinks there's too many regulations and too many laws. But what I would like to say to them is if you, if you don't like the regulations, then stop trying to, to do everything you can within them. It's, it's obvious that you don't cut down trees like this to build a giant home. You could put two houses in this lot, in this area right here, without cutting down these trees. Yeah. But Everett Custom Homes only makes five different kinds of houses, and they don't fit in that particular model. Um, what, I, what, I, what I would like to say now is, is really important. I, we had given up on the idea of, of saving these trees because it was just so much money. We didn't think we could do it. It, it, it just didn't seem right. How, how could we raise that? He wanted $900,000 for this property. And we just didn't think it was, it was worth it. We felt there were so many other problems in this world. It wasn't worth trying to raise all that money. And so we had given up. And so all, the, I thought the best thing we could do was just make sure that people were here when they were cut down and they saw what a shame it was. I believe that these trees would be cut down. Uh, I'm going to introduce two other people who, who came. They're just a representative of some of the other people. The key to these trees being saved was it became more than just a neighborhood issue. It became more than just about three trees in a particular neighborhood that, that people didn't want them cut down. It, it, it became an issue of people get, saying it's just too much. Things are not being done right. And it's just not right. And I'm, and I'm very proud of these people that have come and joined hands with our neighborhood to do this. And I'm very, very thankful of it. This group, this group of people and everybody here who had anything to do with this, please come back to these trees and, and, and tell your children, tell your friends that they wouldn't be here without what happened this week. They would be gone. So I just want to introduce my friend Beth, who I met on Monday morning <laughs> underneath this tree as we were all waiting to get to <laughs> Beth, Beth, she's president of Key Rock Village. <laughs> so, it's been a hell of a week. Um, my name's Beth. I live about 12 blocks up the street, right next to those folks on 50th and Martin, so I actually live on the street. Um, I had heard about this, I saw it on Facebook, my friend Katie um, posted it, she shared the link, and it's like, oh, it's on Martin Street, let's talk about this. I looked at it, I liked it, I followed the stuff, and then there was the thing where you put the phone number in, because when they cut the trees here, this is our phone list, we'll call and alert you, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to go, like, I don't do stuff like this. I don't, I'm a mom, uh, my child is somewhere up here, um, <laughs> I'm a wife, um, I'm a neighbor, I'm a citizen of humanity um, and on Monday we got this message and I got the email and I was like huh there it is and Katie called me about 20 seconds later and said let's go I got the message let's go and I was like really she's like yeah so we went and we showed up and it was so scary what was happening here and we walked up, I was so intimidated because I've never done anything like this before. You know, so many of us haven't. You know, I don't know how to take that first step. I've never been a part of this. You see all kinds of activist stuff and it's, it's scary. It's intimidating to the normal person. But she took the lead and we walked up here. We walked up on this dirt and we stood at this tree and we touched this tree. And it was one of the most amazing, well, yeah, it was one of the most amazing moments of my life. This is, this now, 
<laughs> compete. Um, but I touched the tree and I got tears in my eyes. And I thought of my grandma, who I was really close with, and she passed away in February. And it, my grandma loved the Redwoods and she would have defended the Redwoods. She was that kind of woman. And I knew that when I looked at this tree and I looked at this tree and this tree and I looked up, that I had to stay. You can't not, how do you leave? You know, there's guys in chain, or with chainsaws, there's trucks with wood chippers out here. These are 150 year old sequoias. They're like 30 feet around, they're like 170 feet tall. Pioneers planted them. You know, I mean, it, the story of it's amazing. I've told it hundreds of times this week. And, you know, we just stayed. We went home, we finally ran off the chainsaws and you know, on Tuesday, I'm like, I gotta go. And my husband's like, really? You're gonna go? Like, you know, 6.30 in the morning, I'm like, I gotta be there. And so I came and I sat by myself and drank some coffee. Nobody, there's like one person at the fence and I just came up in here and sat here and then uh, Dave showed up. He's the next person. He was looking at the fence and I was like, hey, come in, there's a hole in the fence. Come on over here. <laughs> and so we sat and he's like, you know, I saw Arthur on Fight Church, because he does Fight Church. and like you know I want to come help and he's like Arthur said there'd be coffee <laughs> Arthur's daughter brought him out a cup of coffee and that's when it began you know um, he took off he climbed a tree it's you know he never climbed a tree before it was unbelievable watching this thing happen trying to figure out all the logistics of living in a tree for a while potentially um, but I just you know through that this whole week we have had the most amazing outpouring of support. Like we were scared that the neighbors were gonna run us off, that people were gonna write horrible things the about us. The neighbors love us. The neighbors love us. We had like 12 pizzas here last night. We took eight that were left this morning down to the homeless people. Like, it has been such an amazing outpouring of support from everybody who's wandered in here. Thousands of people have been here this week, just like you, that have walked in. You, you might not be able to stay here. You know, we were able to stay here, and we decided that that was our priority. But the thing that I would say, you know, a call to action to all you people out there who may have been like me a week ago, do something. You can share it on Facebook. You can tweet it. You can show up. You can bring some cookies. You can say hello. You can let us, like this gentleman, Anthony, let us go through your yard when the police blocked us out, when they raided our Woo! camp. Yeah. 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 That's what we did. They showed up and jumped from one tree to the next and got up in there. They climbed to the top of that tree yesterday and hung flags. Woo! We had drones flying around this place. This has been absolutely remarkable. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. Every, every last bit of it. Um, so it's honestly do something, whatever it is, stop okay. by, check it out. You know, we, we survived. We won. Okay. We won. Yeah, we did. We won. Thank you. This was the scariest thing I've ever done for so many different reasons. You know, um, and we won. And everybody said, this woman came in this morning, she said, you know, I've done this so many times in so many neighborhoods, and we've never won. This is the first time we won. And she's like, thank you so much for staying. You know, but I couldn't have stayed without the crew of Lorax to this. You know, I couldn't have stayed that day. These trees wouldn't be here. But the thing that, that connected us all was the one thing that everybody has to think about. It doesn't matter what race, religion, gender, and none of that. It doesn't matter. The reason why all these people were here and stayed was because we all believed in one thing. We all had one thing in common, and it was that we thought these trees should stay. That's what we have in common. So somebody asked me about my politics and was like, you know, I need to know how you feel. And I said, no, you don't. It's irrelevant. We have that one thing in common. So let's unite as a community. Let's unite as Oregonians, as Portlanders. Do something. Take a stand, man. It's awesome. I've met the best friends. I have a crew. I've never got so many Facebook friend requests in my life. <laughs> it is. These people are amazing. Like, I'm so excited to be a part of this community. You know, we changed the world this week. Yeah. We did. We did. And that's all. Thank you for coming and supporting us.
time. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, one more person's going to speak, and then we're going to have Dave come down, because I think that's why we're all here, is we all want to say thank you to him. And, and I just want to remind you that yesterday there were there were police SWAT teams in here trying to get this guy <laughs> off of the street, and and it was it was quite a scene. And during that time, Robert was downtown in the mayor's office negotiating with Vic Remmers and Everett Custom Homes, <laughs> and they and they dropped their price and they made this possible. So I just want to remind you that. Um, I just want to introduce this guy. When I wasn't really sure, after Monday, I, I figured how many how many times can we stand under these trees and, and, and offer to get arrested before they're just actually going to arrest people and get us away. And I thought we need to get more people. And, and Beth suggested I go to this, 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 this uh, gathering at night called Fight Church. Which is on, which is on, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it, was, it was run by this guy, Jesse Sponberg, and so I'd like to introduce him because he brought a lot of these people here, and we're very grateful for that. Y'all didn't think we could win, did you? <laughs> I did. And let me know if you thought we could win. We won. We won. We actually did something that very rarely happens. So, forgive me. I do a lot of activism. And a lot of times, the activism that you participate in is that, hey, kid. Okay, a lot of times in activism, you have no chance of winning. You're not gonna stop these wars. You're not gonna clean up the oceans. You're not gonna be able to stop fracking. All those terrible things you're not gonna be able to do, but you protest against anyways, because that's what any decent person does. Right. You stand up for some stuff, right. okay? So this is a really rare thing in the world when when we have things like the Fennecke coming into Portland and getting repaired and being sent back out, and when we, when we talk about coal coming through the gorge, <coughs> money almost always wins in this city. Almost always wins in this city. So like, money saved us from this, right? Money saved us from this. And then very wonderful gentleman from South Park saved us from this. But well, let's make no mistake, people. Direct action gets the good. Yes, the money. The money to solve this problem has been here for a while. But until you people Until you people became the people that the Lorax is talking about in the book, <laughs> only when you guys became those people that care a whole lot, only wow. then did this, this, this months long, this extended battle between a rich developer and a, a affluent community, right? But it's not about those. It became about the chainsaws and the trees. A very simple to understand struggle between chainsaws and trees. And the greedy onceler plays a role in this. This echoes all over Portland. This isn't just yes. something that happens on Martin Street. The intersectionality of what's going on here touches everything from the homeless people to the displaced people to the old people who are getting kicked out of homes where they live forever to the rent increases to the tax increases meanwhile people who are cozy people who are cozy with city hall can at their beck and call bring 15 police here to be the strong arm of the capitalist corporate thing that is literally destroying your city 
The people that are supposed to protect your city are taking money from the people who are destroying your city. The people who are tearing down your reservoirs pay money to these candidates. 55% of Charlie Hale's campaign financing comes from real estate interested firms. The ship, the Fenica, came here for a nice little afternoon lunch and get repairs before it went out to destroy polar bear habitat in the uh, Arctic Circle. Did you guys know that Vigor gives money to Charlie Hales' campaign? Did you guys know that? And then we expect leadership. So listen, Portland, we got two choices. Either way, we're making history. Right now with these trees, we are history. This is the moment, this is the crossroads. Either, either we do A, let eco extortion become the new in vogue thing in freaking lame ass Portlandia, or we stand up for ourselves as real Portlanders that they don't have on television, and we stand up for our individual neighborhoods, our individual trees, and our individual right to a quality of life that is being destroyed by these same developers. Right. So We need new policy, and if we can't get it, we need new policy makers. Yes. 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 Before I go, I want to thank Dave, Lorax Dave, Woo! all the farmers. Yeah. Not just Dave up there, man. There was a lot of people who gave supports, tied knots, made it so perfect up there for Dave. Everybody that donated anything that Dave was chewing on or smoking on, you wonderful people. <laughs> I really want to thank the neighbors, the neighbors of this street. I know it was probably a little rough at first. And that guy over there threw a banana peel at us like three hours ago. But the rest of you guys have been incredible. You've been so generous. You've been so kind. You brought your children to play with us hippies. It's beautiful. I want to thank that guy, Robert. Thanks, Atticus. <laughs> Best husband. <laughs> 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 none of this, none of this wouldn't be happening without Arthur. Everyone who's married knows you can't get anything done without the support of your spouse. And, and, if, and if it weren't for Maggie, actually, none of this would be happening. She's the one who, who looked up the permits, and she's the one who found out that they had been approved to clear cut this, this land. And, and she took that initiative, and that's what, that's what started a lot of this. So thank you, Maggie. I do want to thank all the neighbors, and probably the ones I need to apologize to are not here. <laughs> but, uh, I appreciate no one calling the police on this situation, and I pledge to work hard to make this neighborhood uh, a neighborhood that is a place you want to live in. The Don't last thing I, to go fund me. The last thing I want to say is we do still need to pay for the deal that we struck. <laughs> um, we raised a lot of money, but we are still a lot of money short. And so if you are able to, uh, it's worthwhile. I truly believe it. Uh, there's two portals to give. You can go to, we have a GoFundMe. It's GoFundMe, three giants. 
or you can go to Friends of Trees and make a tax deductible donation through Friends of Trees. What's the deal? There's t-shirts today, $20. And there's t-shirts. I don't know who's selling them, but uh, this guy right here, give him 20 bucks to get a t-shirt. Um, can you describe so, the deal? What's that? Can you describe the deal? It's significantly less than $900,000. Of how long it will take and you know what's crazy? People get excited when someone has a Super Bowl. That doesn't really mean anything. Uh, exactly I believe he is on his way down, and I think you know, it is. You should celebrate more than those people that want to see. You guys got a cheer day. Yeah. We love you, Dave.
really strange to look at from this point of view. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't actually get to see the platform get put up. I was sitting on the other side in a hammock uh, while very, very skilled and talented people got everything in place there. And it was just, it's so amazing to see so many people come together for a common cause. Woo! Yeah. Woo! That's it, it's just been surreal. No, no, no. <laughs> Some people baked cookies for Dave, and, and some some people they they offered to to call the mayor's office and write write emails. And Dave said, "Hey, I've got some time, and I've got the energy to climb up in this tree." And he made it. He made a big. Yeah. Big tree. Something's gonna happen, like cops will roll in, and we'll have like uh, some magical skyjack thing or something. I don't know. Just, you know, I was just like, okay, I'll just stay here. What did, what did you think? What, 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 I, there was at one point where you had like, it seemed like half the Portland police yeah. force asking you to come down. What, what were you thinking at that point? Um, you know, I mean, really, I was just like looking into your yard full of people, <laughs> and they're like. Everyone is left. No, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was funny because the police would say, your support team is gone. And then everyone would say, no, we're right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I had set up the tarps intentionally so like I wouldn't really be seeing too much of that. I'd just be like, OK, this is a blue screen, and I'll just imagine. Bro. Hey, look, here's the buddies. <laughs> And then I, I really didn't have to pay attention to it, you know. Um, Where did your uh, you know, come from? Huh? Where did your car come from? Um, you know, I'm just going to have to say that um, there's a lot of ways that uh, we can, you know, like choose to focus our energy. And, um, you know, um, I guess the best way to say that in the context that we're in is that you know i i relied on things that i understood and i knew Yeah, it was really fun, <laughs> but there was times where it was really scary too. You know, um, like the first branch I was hanging on was this one right here, and I was just, I didn't really know what was happening, and I haven't had this thing off the entire time, and so, I mean... Take like, it off! Take it off! Take it off! Yeah. 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 So that's like, you know, it's like, not too bad, you know. This, the side over it. here, you know, got a massage. So that's that kind of, you know, kind of hurts to like, you know, like relying on that to go down. 
Dave, you now have people young and older following you across the United States and across the world. What would you say to the person that is thinking about stepping forward themselves in their own community to something like this? Um, mm, yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, it's one thing to be passionate about doing something, and yeah, this is my first time doing anything like sitting in a tree like this, but really, if you feel like you want to give to your community and give outside of what you normally would do, you really need to do that out of what is your own abundance. And like I said, like Arthur said, you know, I had time. You know, that's what I had to give. You know? And I had, you know, a little bit of training in the past, but I had a lot of confidence in the training of people that have been doing this stuff for years. Yeah. And yeah. that's the reality. There is just so much talent and amazing good energy and people that really know how to communicate with each other and watching that just come around me was just so surreal I don't even know how to explain that but when you know that you're doing what you absolutely should be doing and you know that consequences might not be right you got to rely on just crowds of people saying yes you are doing what is right because <laughs> That's something that you know this community now has a chance to do with a lot of each other. A lot of people here, you know, they all had trust in each other that they wanted to save these trees. But I mean, how could we have known this would have worked so well? Yeah. 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 Yeah, a great, you know, coffee conversation in the morning, you know, it was very nice. And, um, you know, it, uh, You showed up on the promise of a cup of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> I really like coffee. <laughs> Good man. Good for dinner, babe. <laughs> Let's not worry about too much of that. Um, <laughs> like, honestly, seriously, my biggest concern is like, you know, like shower and laundry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, plenty of clean socks. People really donated a lot of stuff. And those toothbrushes? Yes, oh, those were great. I didn't know they existed. I know. What do you think it would take to get somebody doing tree sitting all over Portland so we can get the law changed? Completely and stop cutting the down old city. growth trees. Um, the whole city. It's you know, that's that's a lot of time and effort. And there's a lot of time and effort that people put into all me all kinds of different ways, you know. I know about sitting up in that tree and intentionally blocking myself from certain basic knowledges that I would be like I did not want to focus on how long it I'd been there, what time it was, you know, how sore my legs were or whatever, you know. I really didn't want to focus on a lot of stuff. I didn't, you know, a decision-making process where I was not at the table. I did not want to think about that. I really wanted to rely on that trust, you know? Did you have books to read up there? The Lorax! Um, <laughs> I, I had the entire World Wide Web. <laughs> he was watching TV at like 3 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I like went to sleep shortly after sunset and I like, woke up at like, like 2.30 or something. And I was like, like, what is that noise? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Dave watching TV or something. Like, I just saw me on Facebook for a minute. You, Dave, know. you requested a certain book, didn't you? Oh, what yeah. book was that? Uh, the Baron. Yeah, you, the Baron, right? There were several books going around that, like, uh, okay, so um, at first I was like, anything that's like permaculture, forestry, that has to do with these roots and like how the microorganism, biochemical, sciencey stuff works. <laughs> but, yeah, no, there was a lot. There was several, uh, several good books that people were recommending. Hey guys, I, I think Dave probably wants to take a shower. And yeah. 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 Yeah.
This is some real life Lorax shit.